Xcode, an IDE mainly used in Mac and iOS devices. The main languages you use in Xcode are Objective-C and Swift. Xcode contains features that many other IEDs have, such as syntax highlighting and autocomplete. One of its main features is that it comes with an iOS device simulator, and with it, you can emulate the iPad, iPhone, Apple Watch, or other iOS devices. This is mainly used for testing your apps before you deploy them. Xcode also supports the Swift UI framework, which makes app development a whole lot faster. Xcode also has built-in tools for app store submission. Xcode is generally useful for people who develop for the iOS platform and game devs. Emacs, short for Editor Macros, is a text editor created in the 1970s. It runs on Linux, Mac OS, Windows, and other Unix-like systems. You can use it for many languages such as C++, Java, Python, and even markup languages like Latex and Markdown. A very popular feature for Emacs is key binding and the ability to create keyboard macros for repetitive tasks, which improves developer quality of life. In fact, it was designed to be used without a mouse, as it was made before the mouse was ever commercially sold. Although Emacs is loved by many, it is known to have quite a steep learning curve. Vim, short for VI Improved, is a text editor that is an enhanced version of an older text editor called VI. Vim is known for its keyboard-centric design and its minimal need for the mouse. It has many modes, it supports over 50 languages, and even has a GUI version called GVim. There is a very famous rivalry between Vim users and Emac users. Emacs is joked as being a good system that's only missing a good text editor, and people clown on Vim users for having to Google how to even quit the program because they struggle to find out what the colon Q command is, NeoVim, a modern fork of Vim made in 2015. It was made to improve the Vim codebase while maintaining backwards compatibility with it. You see, Vim was made in the 90s, so its codebase was decades old. NeoVim has updated async support because Vim was single-threaded, and NeoVim is made with the Lua programming language because Vim script was sometimes slow and clunky. NeoVim also has a rich plugin ecosystem, a growing community, and improved user experience. IntelliJ IDEA, an IDE made by JetBrains. Its primary use is development in JVM or Java Virtual Machine based languages. These include languages such as Java, Kotlin, Scala, and Groovy. IntelliJ comes with code assistance, error detection, and code completion. It also supports frameworks such as Spring and Micronaut. IntelliJ also supports database tools that work with SQL. It also has built-in version control with Git, PyCharm, a JetBrains IDE for the Python language. You can also use it with Python frameworks such as Django, Flask, and FastAPI. And just like the previous one, it comes with code completion and database support. It's also a good environment for debugging and testing with PyTest, web development support with HTML and CSS, and it's generally built for any type of Python development you want to do, as it's also compatible with other Python frameworks such as NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. WebStorm, a JetBrains IDE for JavaScript, TypeScript, and front and development. WebStorm can support JavaScript frameworks such as React, Vue, Angular, Svelte, Node.js, Next.js. It has TypeScript integration for advanced type checking. You can also use it to code in HTML and CSS. It also supports auto-completion for CSS libraries such as Tailwind, Sass, and Less. In WebStorm, you can also use database tools based in JavaScript such as GraphQL and MongoDB. You can use it for testing frameworks such as Jest, Mocha, and Cypress. WebStorm empowers you to have everything you need as a JavaScript developer. PHP Storm, another JetBrains IDE, this time for PHP development. It's compatible with tools and frameworks such as Laravel, Drupal, and WordPress. It also works with database tools like MySQL. It has PHP code assistance, and you can use it for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. PHP Storm also comes with a plugin ecosystem to extend its functionality. Rider, another JetBrains IDE, but this time for .NET and C Sharp. But it can also work with the Unity and Unreal game engines via plugins. Rider provides a .NET-centric development environment. You have .NET Core for building web applications, Xamarin for cross-platform mobile apps, ASP.NET for APIs and web servers. Rider is partly based on the ReShaper extension for Visual
Visual Studio, Ruby Mine. Ruby Mine is a JetBrains IDE that focuses on the Ruby language. It also works with other Ruby-based tools like Ruby on Rails and RSpec. It contains Ruby-specific tools such as gem management, and like the others, it has database support, version control, integration with Git, or anything else you need as a Ruby developer. Goland, yet again, another JetBrains IDE, but this time focused on the Go language. And like the others, it has code assistance, but mostly specializes in Go-centric features such as a Go debugger, Go modules, Go vet, and Go lint. Goland also provides web development support as well, and a robust plugin ecosystem. C Lion, an IDE made by JetBrains for C, C++, and Rust. What's so special about C Lion is that you can use it for embedded development for devices like the Arduino. It also has debugging capabilities with the GNU debugger. It also has support for CMake, a popular cross-platform build system for C and C++. C Lion is great for C and C++ developers, game programmers, and embedded engineers. Sublime Text, a lightweight and simple text editor. So it doesn't necessarily have all the bells and whistles that a full IDE would have. Although one advantage that Sublime Text has is that it's made in C++ and Python, therefore making it a lot more lightweight than other full-fledged IDEs like VS Code, which are made with Electron, which is known to hamper performance on older machines. It has split editing, so you can work on multiple files at once. Sublime Text also supports over 100 languages. Sublime Text is many programmers' first code editor they ever use. Notepad++, a free and open source code and text editor for Windows, designed as a better alternative to Windows vanilla Notepad program. It's very lightweight, so it doesn't have the bloat that other Electron-based IDEs would have. Notepad++ can handle large files better than Notepad can, and it generally uses low memory. It has a multi-tab feature for multitasking, and it's also many programmers' first code editor. Atom, an open source text editor made by GitHub. It has a built-in file system browser, and it's hackable and extensible. It currently supports over a thousand plugins via Atom.io packages. You can use it for over a hundred languages. You can edit multiple lines of code at the same time. And as you would expect, it has built-in GitHub support. GNU Nano, often just called Nano, is a simple command line text editor. But unlike Vim or Emacs, Nano is very big beginner friendly. It has intuitive keyboard shortcuts, great for quick file editing. It has syntax highlighting for code, and it's very lightweight as it runs entirely in the terminal. But because of its simplicity, it has no advanced features, and it's also not good with large file sizes. Eclipse, an open source IDE mainly for Java development, but it also supports other languages as well, like C++. It's mainly used for enterprise level projects. Spider, the the scientific Python development environment is an open source IDE for data science, scientific computing, and machine learning in Python. It can use Python libraries such as NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, SciPy, Spider has a light and dark mode, and even though it's mainly used for data science, it has a simple user interface. Spider also comes with a Jupyter console, although it lacks web development support to use Python frameworks such as Django and Flask. Idle, the integrated development learning environment is the default Python IDE. It comes pre-installed with Python. It comes with an interactive Python shell, but it doesn't have advanced features like other Python-based IDEs would have. You can think of it more like Python training wheels, as it's great for beginners. Jupyter, an interactive computing environment used for data science, scientific research, and machine learning. You can create documents called notebooks and run blocks of code in cells. People use it a lot for Python, but it also supports many other languages like R, Julia, and Scala. It can display tables, plots, datasets, and you can use it with many libraries such as Matplotlib, Pandas, Latex, Plotly, and you can export your project to an HTML or PDF. R Studio, an IDE for the R programming language. R is a language designed for statistics and data analysis, and also data visualization. 
Station. It has an interactive table viewer, a plot pane, a viewer pane, and syntax highlighting. RStudio is mainly used by data scientists, academic researchers, and business analysts. Android Studio, an IDE for, if you couldn't already tell, Android app development. It was created by Google, and it's based on JetBrains IntelliJ IDEA IDE. It provides anything a dev needs for building, testing, emulating, and debugging Android apps. It mainly supports the Java, Kotlin, C++, and Dart languages. It has an APK analyzer for testing app sizes and performance, and has an Android device emulator for testing with many Android devices. Visual Studio, an IDE made by Microsoft primarily for Windows. It supports multiple programming languages and frameworks. It supports languages like C++, C Sharp, Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, F Sharp, and VB.NET. It supports frameworks such as .NET, ASP.NET, Node.js, React, Unity, and Xamarin. It comes with many debugging tools, version control with Git, built-in database tools like SQL Server and Azure Data, thousands and thousands of extensions. You can customize themes and layouts, and Visual Studio provides AI tools such as Azure Machine Learning and support for machine learning libraries such as TensorFlow, VS Code, one of the most popular, if not the most popular IDE out there. It's also made by Microsoft, and it's capable of coding in almost any programming language you can think of. What makes it so popular is its large community and its vast extension ecosystem, which include many popular extensions such as ESLint and Prettier. VS Code is great for web developers who want to develop with JavaScript, TypeScript, or React. It's great for data scientists who use Python and Jupyter Notebook. It's great for DevOps engineers who use Docker and Terraform. And it's wonderful for students and beginners as it's so easy to use. Adobe Brackets. Brackets was a free and open source code editor mainly for web development. It mainly focused on real-time editing and live previews for your websites. It had a simple UI and it could support less and SCSS with extensions of course. However, Brackets has been discontinued since 2021. Adobe Dreamweaver. Formerly known as Macromedia Dreamweaver, Adobe Dreamweaver is known as a WYSIWYG editor, which stands for what you see is what you get. Its main use is for building websites. It has a visual site builder where you can use Dreamweaver's user interface to insert elements into your website. It practically lets you build an entire website without coding, but if you want to, it does have a code editor for coding your website by hand. It also has a live view feature to see how the website would look without going to the browser. Dreamweaver also provides templates that you can customize to build and launch your site faster. But Dreamweaver is not as widely used as other IDEs, mainly due to its lack of support of modern frameworks and lack of an extension library. It's also received a lot of criticism for its steep price point. Adobe Flash Builder, a discontinued IDE for building rich internet applications. You use it for building Flash-based web and mobile apps. The two languages it primarily works with is ActionScript and MXML. MXML is a XML-based UI markup language, and ActionScript is a language used in Flash. Flash Builder could also be used to build mobile apps using Adobe Air. However, since the death of Flash in 2020, Flash Builder no longer sees use. Adobe Animate, formerly known as Adobe Flash Professional, is software used for 2D animation. It's not really an IDE, but it does come with its own code editor for its proprietary language called ActionScript. ActionScript is a ECMAScript-based language used in Adobe Animate, but since Flash is no longer supported, it now creates animations based on the HTML5 canvas element, although you can still use it for modern web applications and making mobile apps. Adobe ColdFusion, a web development platform that comes with its own scripting language called CFML, or Cold Fusion Markup Language. CFML combines the tag-based syntax of HTML and the scripting-based syntax of JavaScript. You use Cold Fusion to build enterprise-level projects, although it's not really used that often because it requires a pretty niche skill set like learning CFML. So it's mostly a legacy tool now, maintaining old systems. Code Charge Studio, an older IDE for creating database-driven web applications. It mostly focuses on a visual interface with point-and-click wizards to create web elements, and it provides code generation for multiple languages such as C-sharp, PHP, and Java. And it even lets you code in Cold Fusion CFML. Code Charge 
Nudge was a powerful IDE. However, it's no longer actively maintained. Notepad, the most lightweight, yet the most powerful text editor in the world. You can use it to code in almost any language, and it provides an environment that shows you what real developers are made of. No syntax highlighting, no error highlighting, no built-in terminal, no extensions or plugins, no customization options other than word wrap. Notepad takes you back to a simpler time when everything wasn't just so complicated. You just gotta love the sense of euphoria that you get when you just sit down and it's just you and that plain white bright screen. Be sure to share this video and thanks for watching.